Hi, this is Dr. Hayek, and in this video, we'll talk about stereoisomerism and chair conformation. Now, for cyclohexanes, we have two stereoisomers. We have the cis and the trans. If we take the example of 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane, we can see that the two methyls could be facing the same side forward in this example or it could be backward and this is the cis conformation or they could be facing opposite sides also this is one and two and in this case this is going to be the trans conformation or the trans stereoisomer now the question is how can we represent these stereoisomers using chair conformation. So for that, we will take a look on the chair and we'll start by drawing the cis conformation. So that's going to be the cis. Now for cis conformation, we have to keep in mind that the two methyl groups, they have to be facing the same side. If you recall the video on uh, axial and equatorial bonds we set for up carbons the axials are facing up and for the down carbon the axial are facing down now for equatorial on up carbon the equatorial are facing down and on a down carbon the equatorial are facing up so now for me to have the methyl groups facing the same side if I choose to place the CH3 on an axial in here now the axial here is facing down the equatorial is facing up therefore on the second carbon the CH3 has to be on an equatorial so for cis for 1,2 dimethyl cyclohexane for cis it has to be axial equatorial or we can consider another chair conformation we are now if we draw the axial and equatorials so the axials and the equatorials so if we choose to place the CH3 on an equatorial in here therefore the CH3 on the second carbon will be on the axial in here now for trans stereoisomer in a similar way, if I draw the axial and equatorial bonds, so these are the axial and the equatorial bonds. In this case, if I place the CH3 on an axial on the first carbon, it has to be on an axial on the second carbon because the axial bonds are facing opposite sides or it could be or in this case it could be both CH3s are or both CH3 groups are on equatorial bonds since one equatorial is facing up and the other equatorial is facing down now in this case looking at the trends it's either axial axial or equatorial equatorial however you should not be thinking using axial and equatorial bonds when answering a question about cis and trans conformations however you should be thinking same side for cis and opposite sides for trans. Now consider the following example for 1,3-dimethyl cyclohexane. If we choose to number the carbons on this chair conformation, so if we choose this one as 1, this is the second carbon and this is the third carbon carbon now drawing the axial and equatorial bonds on only one and three position so this would be the axial in here and the axial in here since these are both of them are up carbons now equatorials will be both facing down 
Now, if we place the CH3 group on an axial on the carbon number one, for a cis conformation, it has to be also on an axial for a, the carbon number three. And so this is the cis, and we can notice here that cis, in this case, is axial and axial, or the flipped chair conformation, where we will have the axial becomes equatorial and the equatorial becomes axial, we can have, in this case, both CH3s on equatorial bonds. So this is a cis, and in this case, it's equatorial, equatorial. And this is the main reason why I said you should not be thinking axial and equatorial when you are assigning or when you are answering question about cis and trans because it depends on the position of your substituents. In the case of 1, 2, is different than in the case of 1, 3. For trans, it's going to be similar to what we have explained previously. Now you have to consider the x axial and equatorial and in this case if you choose to place one CH3 on axial now the second CH3 on the carbon number 3 has to be on equatorial since axial and equatorial are facing opposite sides. So this would be the trans conformation where you have it axial and equatorial. So this indicates that there is no general rule that relates cis and trans to axial and equatorial positions. The last example we can discuss here is the 1,4 dimethyl cyclohexane which we will see that it's going to be different than the 1,3 dimethyl cyclohexane but it's similar to 1,2 dimethyl cyclohexane since cis stereoisomer here this is when we have the CH3 groups on an axial and equatorial in both cases for cis so we have two different examples or trans has to be either both on axial or both on equatorial so this takes us back to the example 1 2 dimethyl cyclohexane that was discussed earlier in this video